Brain Request, where two college professors take a second look at questions and answers from around the internet and from you, the listener. My name is Professor Will McBurney. And my name is Professor Mark Sheriff. Hey, Will, did you notice anything different in our class today, in our classroom? Uh, the, the plexiglass? Yeah, the plexiglass the, is... The incredible is... healthy plexiglass that is not in front of the lectern. Okay, let's... Yeah, let's talk about this. For... Yeah. <laughs> so, so... You you know that that I am one of the more careful people out there. I'm I'm yes. still kind of on the the super anal retentive side, you know, not going places, and you know, I got a kid that's not vaccinated, so I'm plan trying to play it real safe. So I'm standing there, and I see these things, and and so the the listeners understand this is what it looks like in our classroom. There is a lectern on the far left side of the middle. There's three projector screens, and it's on the far. Stage left, house right side of the projector screen. And then there's two just kind of long tables that are just butt up against the the lectern to kind of make, you know, a place that you can put your stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A barrier. A barrier to hold off the hordes of regrade requests. (laughs) Extra credit. No. That's the zombie apocalypse. And so these these plexiglass things have not been there. As a matter of fact, they I think they were there at the very beginning and they broke. Yes, correct. Because they're, I, I I don't actually think they're plexiglass. I think they're just straight up plastic. Well, it looks like they were three D printed or made in some fab yeah. shop here. Right. Yeah. Um. But the, but this just big pieces of clear thing held up by, you know, wedge triangles at the bottom that don't mm. really stay on. Anyway, that, so that, well, that so that was how it broke. Wasn't the the sheet itself, but the legs holding it up just kept snapping. Yeah. Which would have been really awkward during class, probably. So, so anyway, it, was, it happened to me. It happened to you. It broke um, in class. W- well, it was broken, but one of the professors like jury rigged it to stand up, and then it just, <laughs> you know, a, a, a butterfly flapped its wings, and the 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 sheet fell down. And we're still we're still monitoring the chain of cause and effect, and and what's going to happen as a result of that. But uh, yeah. That I can't imagine that was distracting at all. But so so they've got these two big plexiglass things up now. And one, neither of them are in front of the lectern, as you just noted, where Correct. you kind of have to stand for because that's where the microphone is. And that's where I set my laptop up and that sort of thing. The other thing is that the, the plexiglass itself extends maybe one foot taller than me, maybe. Correct. And then the two plexiglass have about a three inch gap between the two of them. Correct. So it's breathe, no breathe, breathe. And then apparently air only flows in one direction in this room. Yeah. So this is this is where a lot of these plexiglass barriers, um, it 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 makes sense if you're something like a cashier and all you're trying to do is basically create six feet of distance because the particles can't go, you know, through the plexiglass. They would have to go around it. That's the idea. Um, the detour of particles. Correct. But it, for the sake of lecturing, it would not make any difference whatsoever because we're already more than six feet away from the students just standing at the lectern. And so if there's air particles in the air, which contain COVID, which were in an indoor environment, so that that would be happen. The the plexiglass does absolutely nothing. I mean, they're just going to dissipate out throughout the room. Uh, in some cases, plexiglass has been shown uh, where it's been installed to actually slow the airflow in the room, and as a result, increase the buildup of oh, um, of saliva particles. Oh, so, delicious! Yeah. Uh, so. It's security theater uh, because it's not like we're talking to students behind that. I mean, I you know you could, but even then, like it doesn't offset the fact that there's you know over a hundred students in the room. All oh, you're being generous. We do not have a hundred people showing up to class right now. I I have I I do an eleven (laughs) ten. Okay, eleven ten maybe maybe eleven ten. But uh, we we haven't had that. I mean today. Yeah, well, you mentioned we talk behind beside, behind it, but you know, I, we were doing an activity at the end of class today, this kind of worksheet thing, and I was standing at the lectern. The students were lining up in front of the plexiglass as if it was some sort of academic Chipotle, and this was yeah. like the sneeze guard in front of them, and it was just I don't know. And the worst part for me was uh, 
it was catching the reflection of the projector yes. on the screen behind me. Yeah, and I, I can't ex- see anyone on anyone to the right of us. I I can't see them raise their hand. I have to like move my head around like I'm trying to create some new dance, but I can only move from the waist up. I don't know. That metaphor got away from me. That that was that was yeah, I'm not really sure what was going on there, but yeah. um yeah, I'm still just pondering this, and now I, I want to take it down, or I don't know, whatever. Like a it's dipping there. bird. That's what I should have gone with. Okay, all yeah, right. That, that would have worked. Anything exciting going on in in your world, uh, other than other than West Virginia losing again? I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you know, too sports. too soon. Um, sports. It's it's a it it's it's a pain, but it's a pain that I I voluntarily choose and put myself through. Uh, because frankly, I think I deserve it. I'm, I'm a bad person. No, um, no, <laughs> that, it, it, you know, sports, uh, um, sports, sport, okay. sports. It, it, here is my view on sports. It is a very healthy outlet for the incredibly destructive tribalistic instincts that we as a species have. Okay. It, it works a lot better than than war, which we tried for. Hang on, let me check. All of human history, pretty much until World War II. Not to say we've we've had we've we've gotten away from it completely, but it's, it's better. Sports. It's yeah, better so sports. than war. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> well, I feel like the world has ended, and a miraculous thing has occurred. Hey, Will. Yes. We didn't get one question from a Ooh. listener. We got two questions from listeners. So I know we got the one. You told me about it. I don't remember you telling me about the second one. It came in uh, roughly one hour ago. Okay. All right. And I have not gotten to, to send to you yet. So, so we'll hold that one for next week. Okay. Right. You know, we don't want to burn through all these at one time. I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> I mean, but, we have to savor yeah. these. Yeah, but the the question that was sent to us, I think, is is absolutely great. If you want to, yeah, I I, we we, and we should ask it. It it is it is from I I think I think I actually didn't touch touch base with you first on this. I think first name initial sounds a good way to because you you we're not want to call people out fully. So this question comes in from Matt B. um, And the question is: Hi, Mark and Will. I had a question about cryptography and password strength. I'm familiar with XKCD's correct horse battery staple example. So this is a a comic strip Mm -hmm. where the author talks about password strength. And instead of having passwords, you should have pass phrases. Um, However, in a dictionary tag, it'd be pretty easy to to go through a permutation of different words instead of letters, right? I mean, in this case, we have four relatively common words. There's not a lot of entropy there. So how secure is the pass phrase model? What can we do to make it better? Choose harder words, choose certain characters, add words from other language. Cheers, Matt B. All right. Matt, well, thank you for yeah. being the very first person. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank, uh, we, th- thank you for it. Yeah, go ahead. I, we, I, I was going to say, we very much appreciate it. So I, I ran some numbers here because I think what's, in, what's important to talk about is password versus passphrase. Right. And the notion of... Basically, the number of bits of entropy that, you know, as we add to a password, because the reason I'll just start with this. The reason original password, the the concept of password fails is you pick a word Mm -hmm. that anyone can guess as in like I choose my daughter's name, Samantha. I choose, uh, you know, a, a birthday. I choose a single piece of data that could be socially engineered. Right. And or it is not many characters of a limited character set. Twenty six right. characters, all lowercase or fifty two. If we're going to throw in the capitals. Well, well first right? I think let's talk about kind of how. Uh, yeah. So, so 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 what when it's saying password and passphrase, let's first describe uh, what the comic is saying, since it's asking about the comic Go for it. So be, because it's important to distinguish what the comment is saying is a bad password versus what like the question I think is, is asking, are they really saying this is a bad password? So first the, the, the first example it's given is like, okay, let, let's pick a word like, you know, 
It's specifically in this comic, it picks the word troubadour. It it's then a good word. replaces the t the low the first T is capitalized. The uh letter O is replaced with the number zero, which would be uh in this case what's called a common substitution. Like if you're trying to inject a number into the word, the the thing you'd think to do would be, okay, well, let's try, um, you know, replacing the O with the zero. The A is replaced with four, uh, whereas the third O is just a lowercase O. Then, because you have to have, you know, a number in punctuation, it just adds a random punctuation and numeral. Now, the, the reason, so this is, this is something I have seen this meme shared by family, is there like, Oh, I wish on the pa I wish on the login page it would tell you the password requirements so I could remember what I need to do to my password to get it uh, <laughs> to get it to fit with the system. And I think the first thing, well, and we'll come back to it, but the first thing is uniqueness of passwords is the important part. That, that um, it is a it is an important part, but it is very important is, to have different passwords for different systems. Yes, use a hey 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 folks. Use a password keeper. That's, yeah, promise, that's going to be the moral of this story. Use a password manager. Password managers are glorious. And yeah. once you start using... I mean, even the built-in one in Google Chrome mm -hmm. is great. Yeah. And, and, but, but so the gist of this is it's trying to create a password the way I think a lot of people instinctively try to create a password. Take a word and modify or add to it such that it, it it all the check marks are green and it accepts the password. And it is contrasting that with a a short collection of unique words. Mm -hmm. So I so I, I want to make that clear that um that's what the comic is arguing for versus uh what we're gonna get into uh later when it comes to actually what we would call gibberish passwords. But but I, what it's saying is the first one is easy to guess because, as we'll do the math, it's easy to guess one word and all the random modifications, relatively. It's much harder to guess several words. That does mm -hmm. not mean that the best possible password is what the XKCD is recommending. Right, right. So, so I just right. want to clarify that ahead of time because I think the question is argue... The question is... Uh, somewhat, I, I don't, I don't want to say missing the point, but it's kind of, it's too good a question from the standpoint of the audience of who this comic is actually supposed to be instructing, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, he, here's the way I look at, it, or I want to look at it. Mm -hmm. If if we're looking at every individual character as a different tumbler in the lock, so to speak, Correct. and by default, let's just say there's 26 different potential values. If we're just looking at lowercase characters, if look, your average password, let's say is, let's just say it's a good password, quote unquote, good password. And it's like, it needs to be eight to 12 characters. Let's say it's 12 characters, mm -hmm. 26 to the 12th. So if we looking at 26 different possible values for each of those, it comes to 9.5 times 10 to the 10th. Okay. Well, let's throw in the entire set of, or a large portion of the set of numbers and uppercase letters and in yays and everything else, but it's still 12, char 12 characters long. Mm -hmm. So now let's do 200 to the 12th. Well, that's four times 10 to the 27th. Okay. Mm -hmm. So going from lowercase letters, 12 letter, 12 character password, 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 27th. If we increase the possible value. So or this is where you're 27th or was it two to the Four times 10 to the 27th. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. All right. Yes. So adding in gibberish, does it help? Yes. You go from, you know, 10 to the 10th to 10 to the 27th. But look at this. If you take just the lowercase letters, 26 characters, and instead of 12 character password, you go to 20. That's not that much more. Mm -hmm. That's you small phrase. Just by going from 12 characters to 20 characters, you've now gone to 2 to 10 to the 28th. Right. So just by using lowercase letters and just going a little bit further, length is what makes your password stronger, not necessarily I'm adding in the gibberish, adding in more characters helps, mm -hmm. but going longer is what you wanted. 
So if we add in just uppercase letters and numbers, we end up at 10 to the 40th. Right. And now we're in the realm where compu- you're just not going to brute force it. Right. You're, you're talking but, for, for context uh, in, in the XACD comic. It says, say you could guess the password a thousand times a second for two to the 44th, which is actually really close to 10 to the 40th. If you, if you do the math on it, um, well, not really close, but kind of close to it. I, so I was doing back of the envelope stuff in Wolfram okay. Alpha. I, I actually forgot to pull the numbers off of the comic, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pleased so, I was relatively close. Yeah, it was. It was saying so for for 44 bits of entropy, which it's it's close to that. The number you're saying, if you do the log, it works out to pretty close to it. Um, that is 550 years, guessing uh, at a thousand times per second. As opposed to the the first password, the troubadour with the substitute, the common substitutions and two random elements at the end, that is at a thousand guesses a second, only three days. So two to the twenty eighth versus two to the forty fourth. Remember that human brains don't work great with exponents. We hear two to the twenty eighth and two to the forty fourth, and we think, oh, two to the forty fourth. That's got to be what, like twice as big. No, it, it's 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 much, it is, much 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 bigger. It's two to the uh, two to the sixteenth bigger, or roughly uh, that is uh, roughly uh, like sixty five billion times bigger. Yeah. So yeah. So the the back to your original point, or, right. or uh, well, I guess we were both making the point about using a password manager. Correct. So. The reason you use a password manager is so you can have a unique password, but also you can let the password manager come up with just the randomest stuff ever right. as long as you want it to be. And that's great. And you only have to remember your one password to log into that. Right. But the reason a passphrase is good is because it's memorable. Exactly. And that and that's the key. We want to make sure the password is something that you can memorize. You don't want it saved onto a notepad file on your computer. <laughs> you don't want it written on a sticky note that's on your computer. You don't want it on your phone. Um, and and what happened, I know, when I was an undergrad, was that was when they started doing a lot of the forcing people to add letters and symbols to their passwords. Yet, some of the systems that I had to interact with added those requirements you had to have a symbol and punctuation while still forcing your password to be 10 characters or less which <laughs> that 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 is that as we talked about length is important so that encourages taking just common words and and random substituting if it's gibberish the human brain's not good at remembering gibberish Mm-mm. so this is where um the, the way i would describe it is a a short common word is a bad password that you should not use. It is vulnerable mm-hmm. to a uh, what the question asked, which was a dictionary attack, which is you just brute force guess all the the most common words in the dictionary. Um, that's bad. That is bad. We can concur. Right. That is bad. Short gibberish is better, but again, length is actually having a longer password with common letters is better than having a, a shorter password with gibberish. The best passwords are really long gibberish. Th- those are the best passwords yeah. if memorization isn't a factor. But, but right. that's, that's, the, that's the caveat. And so first, we strongly encourage using a password manager. Second, don't reuse passwords. Uh, you know, ha- ha- people don't get hacked because someone's like, oh, I'm going to, you know, hack into their computer and I'm going to search all the files. for pass-. They get hacked because like the website for, you know, fans of Smash Mouth in the 90s <laughs> got like got their database dumped to like some paste bin that everyone saw. And you're still using the same password on your bank account. That that's the real problem, right? That's where most uh most of the hacks come from. That's why reusing passwords is so bad, which is why you should uh change it. Would you say those people are not the sharpest tool in the shed? Okay, all right. We we don't need to start we do not need to start with the all-star puns. Okay, you you made the smash mouth joke. I get to make the pun. Yeah, yeah. That's I I, I did this to myself. Um 
<laughs> but but yeah, so so again, if you if memorization's not a factor, long gibberish is the gold standard. But be, you can leverage length by using a passphrase of short words. And then the example gives is when uh, XKCD refers to common words as the 2000 most common words, that gives you 11 bits of entropy because it's 11, you know, two to the power of 11 possible words to choose from. That times four, uh, or that to the power of four, I should say, because you have four of those words, mm -hmm. um, is two to the 44 which is still really good. It, it's it's on the it's in the neighborhood of ten to the forty. Just if you do the math, it works out. Um, I am I may actually be doing that wrong. Come to think of it, no, it's well, not in the neighborhood of ten to the forty. I'm I was I was doing logs too simply. Anyway, okay, I, I trusted you. I, yeah. Suffice I was it to say, wrong. suffice it to say, it's good. It's still it, it's better. It's I want to say. It, yeah, it, it's it's still better. I mean, like so. I use one password. That's the that's the password manager I use. What do you have? Do you have one that you like? I, I actually just use the Google uh, password use the one manager. Built in the browser. Yeah, I use that I, one. Um, but I but I do have a separate one for desktop applications. But I, you can actually sync them up. Well, yeah, I I, I like I like one password because um, and I actually subscribe to it. And um, my, I have a vault of passwords and my wife has a vault of passwords. And then we have a shared vault mm -hmm. and we can actually move the passwords back and forth. And so sometimes we'll see one versus another. So, you know, I have an account with the health insurance and she has her own account. So we keep them separate and, you know, it, it's very handy. And also on my iPhone, uh, it knows when I log into almost any app on my phone, it will just open one password and we'll pull it all in for me, right. which makes it great. So I just have just massive gibberish passwords for mm -hmm. everything. And everything is wonderful, except for things like at UVA. Specifically, I'm thinking about the the net badge password, the password I have to put in to log into a machine when I go into right. a room. I don't that need to pull you have my to memorize. Yeah. Yeah. And so for that, I have a, you know, a phrase from a video game that I play and I change it. I change the phrase every, yeah. you know, six months or so. Whenever yeah, I'm required to. Yeah. It, it, that's the other thing. Changing your password has the benefit of if you actually do change your password every six months, again, we're talking about these attacks taking a long time, you're effectively deleting their progress, right? Um, hmm. Now, again, they won't necessarily know you change your password, but uh, this this takes me to one, one thing I want to bring up, which is that um, no security system can be theoretically perfect. Because uh, <laughs> someone has to get in at some point. <laughs> right, well, yeah, but there's also right. Someone has to get in at some point. Yeah, I mean by definition. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> but uh, so at Def at at DefCon, which is like a hacker convention, one of the uh, not actually been, but I do know that one of the example, one of the big uh, things that people do is lock pick village, where they teach people to pick increasingly complex locks, and the message of that is not to actually encourage breaking and entering. But to illustrate that, because um, usually like, the most advanced lock, whoever breaks it first gets some prize, but you're, you're limited to so much time to attempt it or whatever. Um, the point is that people will put effort if they believe that effort is worth it. And the more that you have to protect, the more vulnerable you are. But at the same time, people always take low-hanging fruit. So, seriously, if you have a password that you've been using for more than 10 years or longer, for the love of God, change it. <laughs> so, thank you, Matt B., for this question. Great question. Uh, we very much appreciate it. We would love to have more questions. If you, ha if you have any more or anyone else uh, in, in the sound of uh, the, the, sound of the voice, um... Thank you so much. And we will get to the next question next week from one of our favorite listeners, my parents. Um, <laughs> we will, we'll do that next week, but you know, talking about talking about questions, talking about um, former students makes me want to say, Hey, excuse me. What now? Ooh, that's right. Everyone's, Everyone's favorite game? I don't know. <laughs> the only game that we have, the the only extra bit we have on the show, which is fun to come up with. As a reminder, the way that Excuse Me What Now works is I'm going to ask 
Professor Will McBurney three questions. And the, each of these questions are going to be a set of three either student excuses or regrade requests or some communication from student in some way. And he has to find the one I made up. The other two have either come from my personal experience from something I've heard from my colleagues or I pulled off of the professor subreddit. And this time I actually had to skip a few because I knew that you saw them on the professor yeah. subreddit because you commented on them. So I couldn't use a couple of them yeah. or at least one. So we'll see how much you've been reading lately. I haven't Are been you perusing ready? it too much, but I, I, I have I have dabbled. I don't have it open right now on my computer. Okay. I swear. Here we go. Question one. A. I had a student submit a regrade request for a discussion question on the last take-home exam. The complaint? The student said they copied it perfectly from Chegg, so it couldn't be wrong. They even double-checked. They even included the link to the post. Okay. B. I gave a student a zero for an incomplete assignment. Instead of a regrade, I simply got back a picture of The Rock as a meme with the word, my bad, across his face. As in Dwayne The Rock Johnson, right, not like yes, a, yes. an actual run. Okay. And C, I just received a video submission for an essay assignment. The students submitted their essay as a screen recording. For six seconds, I watched them scroll through their essay on their phone. I obviously emailed them to get a Word document, a PDF, or plain text version, and they just told me I could pause the video and read it. I honestly don't know what to tell this student. So, A... Okay. We have the student who asked for regrade request and was so kind as to include the link to the place where they copied it from to show right. you that they copied it correctly. B, the student who submitted an incorrect assignment and instead of sending an actual regrade request, sent in a picture of the rock. Mm -hmm. And C, the student who submitted a video recording of their paper right. and just told the professor to read, to pause it and read it. Which one is the fake story? Uh, B, I can totally believe. Um, I just like the 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 st depending on the class, it, depending on who the professor is, their personality. I could imagine a student like sending that to us. Um, not saying it happened to us because it hasn't. At least it hasn't happened to me. Maybe it's happened to sheriff. But so I'm I'm ruling out B. So I'm between A and C. Uh, I can. I can believe both could have happened if I had to guess based on the UVA student, which I don't know it is, could be from the professor subreddit. If I had to guess based on the UVA student, I would say C, only because I have been sent um, Word documents. I have been emailed Word documents in our intro programming course for the final project, like, and the students openly say like, oh, I don't know how to write code in, in the IDE and they expect to pass the class. And then of course I find they cheat on other assignments. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with A is the fake one, but I, I think it's actually C, but I, 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 I'm going to go with A. So you're going to say A, the student sent in the link from Chegg as yes. the fake one. Yeah, you are correct. That is the one that I made up. The the video submission one was so good from the professor subreddit. It was literally that thing that I read that I said, oh, we're doing excuse me. What now this week? <laughs> I'm going to find other ones because this is just too yeah. good. Uh, so so I want to be clear, though, with a I did have a situation where I caught a student using Chegg on a take home exam and their response was, yes, I, I knew you would find that. So this was just a, a cry for help. And I was hoping that you could you could help and, and make sure that I passed the class. And okay. that, was, that was their explanation. So, yeah, I, I, I that's did the feel closest a little... I could see to that. But yeah, that's the thing is that one was almost too, uh, too believable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Question two. You've you already got one on the board. A. A student emailed me to say it was unfair for them to receive a late penalty on assignment because their astrological sign means that they have poor time management skills. B. I have a student that sent in a complaint all the way up the chain that I close my emails in a way that is far too personal. For reference, I sign my emails, best regards. Okay. And C. 
A student has been messaging me for the past week, insisting I need to meet with them to help with their current assignment. I tell them to feel free to come to my office hours. They say I'm never there for my office hours, and they're going to report me to the chair. Finally, I just tell them to come at the set time that we chose. When they finally do arrive, they open their laptop in a huff and point the assignment at me. I stare at the Java code in front of me for a minute with my mouth hanging open before I finally tell the student, I teach French, and I really can't help them with this. All right. So we have, we have A... The student who uh, should not receive a late penalty because of their astrological sign. Okay. B, the student who sent a complaint up the chain because the professor signs their emails with best regards as being too personal. And C, we have the student who complained to the wrong professor, so much so that they complained to a French professor instead of their computer science professor about a given assignment. Which one of these is the story that I have made up? All right, I have, I have clarifying questions. And then you Please. Can, all right, first, question yes. A. What's their astrological sign? I do not have that information. Okay, uh, let's skip to C. Did uh -huh. they then go to the French department's chair? Or maybe even uh, the language department, if, it, if it's a subsidiary of that? I also do not have that information. Okay. What was B again? That was the... Uh... B was, uh, they complained because signed the email oh, yeah. too but personally with best regards. Did they, did they provide a suggestion of what would be appropriate? Uh, I do also do not have that information. Okay. All right, so... Um, because some of these either the person didn't put it in the post or I haven't made it up. Right. So uh, in both yeah, yeah. So, so, I don't have the yeah. No. To be clear, those those were all just vaguely disguised attempts at a joke. Anyway. Um. <laughs> B. I can actually totally believe because I don't think anyone has worked out how to do email correctly. Uh, just just because like so. There's a group of people who write emails like letters, and they have yes. all the accoutrement of dear and, and sincerely in that, um, and and you know the the style and uh, and the P.S. which just to me is is stupid an email just just write it. But we can go we can go in an entire rant yeah, about so students I'm not, I'm not and their be, inability to write my email. My point is I can believe that because everyone makes up their own rules. So I'm going to rule B out. Okay. Uh, everyone makes up their own rules and, and religiously adheres to them. All right, so A and C. We have the astrological sign, and C was the French department. I, I could see C happening if, if there's a similar name at play, or it's, it's something where like they have the same last name, or at least... A common misspelling of the last okay. name. All right. I know there are people who take astrological signs seriously, but thankfully it's dwindling. I can't take anyone like I don't know my astrological sign and I can't take anyone who actually reads horoscopes seriously. Uh, please don't tell me you take horoscopes. You read horoscopes. No, I, I, okay. I, I like astrological signs because I find, uh, you know, constellations and the stories behind them very interesting. And so right. I, 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 I enjoy it for that. But, but, but you're, 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 you're interested in the cultural history of constellations, not how Mercury in retrograde is going to make you burn your toast, right? I'm going to say A is the fake one, but I could, again, it's one of those, I could totally believe it just because I could believe C more. Mm, well, A is one that I have pulled off of the professor okay. subreddit. C is the one that yeah. I did make up. Okay. So, uh, you are, uh, one, this one, is one, the, yeah, one the, one. the rubber match here. Last one. Question three. A, I walked into the classroom the other day and literally no one from my class showed up. I checked the calendar, confirmed it was the right day and not a holiday. I went back to my office and sat there dumbfounded. At our next class meeting, most of the class did show up. I immediately asked, what happened the other day? All of them said it was raining, so they couldn't come. Okay. B. I'd like to think the student was being helpful, but the other the other at, excuse me, but after class the other day, during COVID still, mind you, a student brought me a bag of apples and handed to me saying they thought I looked malnourished and this should help. I just stood there holding the bag of apples, not knowing what to say. And C, I'm teaching an online class, and unfortunately, I didn't check the mute on Zoom before 
blessing out my cat with language that would make a sailor blush after it knocked over my switch behind me. Okay, C is mine, first and foremost. <laughs> C, C, C may actually be me. I, 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 I've never submitted this to the Professor subreddit, but, like, I'm pretty sure that C is, is at, I'm pretty sure C is something that has actually happened to me at some point. Sheriff, Sheriff is not denying this, so apparently I did have my mic unmuted at some point. Okay, literally, well, I'll ask after, I guess, because I can't give it away. C is actually me. Um, Alright, so, so B is the apples, and A is the no one came to class because it was raining. Yep. Um... I'm going to say that if it's a smaller class, I can absolutely believe A. I have I, so I taught a class when I was at Notre Dame as a grad student. I taught a class that had 16 students, and there was one day three people showed up, and it rained. Um, and Man. it was and it was like the day before a break, so it was just a confluence of factors there. I am gonna go with. The B that you look malnourished, that's the part that it's like, I can't imagine a student saying that. Except I totally could. Ah, oh, God. Stop. It's between <laughs> A and B. There's just too many details in B. There's too many details. And, and, and Occam's Razor tells me that A is more plausible. So you're saying B is I'm the fake B story. B is the fake story. You have seen through the 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 shadows, mm -hmm. and you were like, okay, malnourished probably was too much. Yeah, I probably put too much too much juice on that one, too much apple juice on that particular one. Like if, if they just said like, oh, you looked hungry, like okay, that's just a that's just a brown nosing student. You look malnourished. There's no <laughs> way that that is taken as a compliment. There's no one no. who's like, oh, thank you. I look like I'm dying. It wasn't supposed to be a compliment. It was supposed to be, look, here, look, I have provided you with, with nourishment. Here is fruit. Enjoy. Foster, foster dependency to guarantee an A. Got it. <laughs> An apple a day keeps the Fs away. So, um, it, is C exactly you? It was it was actually on the professor subreddit, okay. not by you, but it was, it was like, nah, I have to do this one. It was close yeah, enough. That, that, so. I did not post that. I'll have to look for it, but I'm... I'm pretty sure I did that in our last podcast for the note. Uh, yes, actually, I think you did. I don't think I don't think you cursed quite as much. We we still don't have an explicit tag on the podcast, but yeah. um, congratulations! I think so. You've won every time that you've that you've played. Really? Huh? You're you're just a you're just a pro. Yeah, I need to I need to I need to do one for you coming up. Okay. Short question. I, very very short okay. question. Okay. Why did why did uh, Windows betray Times New Roman and go to Arial? They were betray trying to save pixels. Or Calibri. Calibri? Oh, is that how it's pronounced? I I did not know. I I've always said Cal I don't know. Yeah. I put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. This is um, this is a problem I have where there's tons of words that I've never heard spoken aloud that I have read, and I don't know how they're pronounced, and sometimes I hear them and I don't recognize them. So, yeah, I, I drive my wife insane because I say gauge sometimes mm -hmm. instead of gauge because that's the way I read it when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and so to this, yeah, I, I still flip between them. But regardless, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I I don't know why they switched to unless they wanted to own the font. And uh, well, I so I don't know if it is uh, explicitly an ownership for the font. But what what I will say is. A big reason people have moved away from Times New Roman is simply that more media is now consumed digitally than in print. Times New Roman is a very good basic print font. Uh, yes. it, and and one of the things is it 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 is a serif font. So serif, mm -hmm. if you ever look at uh if you ever look at like, you know, a letter like an M, think of think of the letter M. And if you ever see it in print, you might see that there are like little lines at like the three points on the bottom, like little horizontal lines that kind of stand out more. They're they, you know, they they add a little character, I guess, a little flair. Um, that a little is pizzazz. 
but that is actually good for print reading. It can it can actually improve character recognition. It can make it easier to track the line with your eye, the line of the text, especially if the text is dense. So it's very good for newspapers where the text is very dense. There's very little spacing on print newspapers. But in digital text, what we have to do is we have to take the text that is already um, effectively, you know, pictures of letters, and we have to represent those in potentially variable sizes. That is, a, the size could be one thing or it could change in it. And also we have to display it on a screen that we can't predict because people have very, very different computer monitors. Some people have high definition, ultra wide, high gaming monitors like I do. My wife doesn't and she she intentionally still uses an older monitor because it has less blue light and she prefers that but it has a it it only has 720p as the vertical that's um, not enough p's right need more p's and so how the letters look can change between those two screens and it turns out that the serifs end up just creating a lot of visual noise and so oh. this is why in digital in digital display you use serif fonts for nice looking head headings and sans serif fonts for text because they translate better. They rasterize better would, would be the term, which is just basically figure out which pixels are which color in order to make the letter look mm -hmm. normal. Um, whereas in in print text, you often see sans serif headings and serif text. And it's just it's just because the median of of print that works hmm. better, whereas it, whereas most of the work people are producing on, say, Microsoft Word or on Google Docs is for digital consumption. Right. Like, huh. Interesting. Yeah. The more you know. That is that is one of the reasons. That's not to say that that's the only possible reason, but. Yeah, you're also going to give a uh, because we are saving all of those pixels, we've actually saved a rainforest and the energy that we've spent from not having to print all those serif. Mm -hmm. No, no, uh, okay. I don't think so. But, <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, um, you know, if we saved anything, it all got used up by one billionth of an NFT sale. So uh, we have that's got to be something we talk about yeah. probably next week. Uh, you probably saw the story about the, the person who invented the technology did that because his character in World of Warcraft was nerfed. And that's what made him quit the game and want to do something different. And so here's your butterfly effect. Yep. So because Soul Rend was Soul Touch was nerfed in Warlocks in WoW. Now <laughs> several. Now twenty percent of the power consumption in Europe is is cryptocurrency and NFTs. Yeah. So that's another discussion. <laughs> but the other thing that we have to touch on this week, uh, I think the last the last question for today is Facebook. Yes. Yes, went away and oh, so uh, my, glorious. Oh my, my! There, there were a couple of tweets that I really appreciated. One was, "Quick, let's have an can, election." Bef before, yes, quick, let's have an election. <laughs> I, I like that joke. But before <laughs> we get Thank into you. this tweet, I need to I, stop I feel, for a I second. Feel very, uh, go ahead. I, I feel we have to necessarily stop for a second and say, "Okay, so Facebook was down. So your first instinct was to go to." another social media website to 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 see what everyone thought about the social media website being down well in all fairness i, I i'm on twitter that's the only one that i i, I don't yeah. do facebook anymore because the, the reason i'm on i do twitter only is because i follow a bunch of of pro hearthstone players right. and i like to see all the decks that they post so um but yes i do i i, I this joke actually might have been on reddit um, but the other the other good one was Facebook is down. And so I finally finished uh, two papers, three chat, three chapters of a book, uh, two grant reports and, you know, <laughs> yeah, something along those lines. So, yeah, um, yeah. Social media is a thing. It's right. it's interesting. And I, I think it's important for people to know. And we can easily joke about how Facebook went down. Oh, no. How, how, how is how is that your your old next door neighbor not going to get their anti-vax information? You know, we can make those jokes all day. Mm -hmm. But what's really important, though, is that in in many in developing countries, WhatsApp, which right. is one of the apps that went down, is literally the main 
form of communication used in those countries. It's like we use iMessages here on our iPhones. Well, and so those of you who have iPhones, yes. Yeah, fair enough, but or Signal or or, or pick something else, but hmm. Facebook has agreements with the telecom companies in those those countries. Right. And so when Facebook went down here, it's like, ha, 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 okay. Oh, you were in Oculus VR. You know, if you die in VR, you die in real life. You know, we're making those jokes. There are places where, like, the country went dark. Yeah, yeah. And so so this is, you know, pretty serious. Yes. Um, it's also kind of terrifying that, you know, this one error can have this particular effect. But right. um, I have a, a link to Cloudflare's... A blog, which is yes. a a net technology company, they they help people with denial of service attacks. They are constantly monitoring the internet for any crazy things that are going down, and they have a wonderful blog post that explains what they saw. So again, they don't have the actual insider information. They they've got some bits and pieces to let them know, but based upon the evidence of what they saw, they've got a pretty good idea of of knowing exactly what happened. So I'll make sure I put a link to this in the show notes. So if you want to go read this blog post, I think it's it, I think anyone can mm-hmm. you know read it. You don't have to be super tech savvy to read it. Um, how did how did you find out or understand about what happened? So I do know it had and I, I, I don't actually know the details. Um, I didn't I skimmed the post, but I so my understanding was it was related to DNS problems. And, and so we, of course, need to take a second and say what DNS is. DNS, which I actually can't remember what it stands for. It's Domain Name Service, right? So, yep. yep oh, I got actually it. got it. Okay, I figured I was going to be off on one of those words. Anyway, uh, it is it is more or less uh, a phone book. The, <laughs> the same way that... Um, Let, let's call it an address book, and I, there's another analogy we'll need to use on top of it. Okay. So it's, 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 hey, what's Will's house? And I get, you know, 123 Mountaineers Avenue. That it is, that it is, does the translation. Did you just dox me on this? No. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I intentionally didn't say your actual address. Yeah. Which I think I I know the road. I don't yeah, know the you, box you, number. Well, I know you know where it is. So, and you could find yeah. it anyway. Um. Yeah. So, so the idea is he he says I want to go to Will's house, and it says you know one two three Main Street, and then um you know he he gets directions to that, and he can go to the house. And that that and then he's there. He can see what's in my house or whatever. Um, that that's the gist. Whoa, of there. <laughs> I, I, so, so yeah. the directions part is the next is the next thing. That's why I wanted to use address. So DNS is the lookup. DNS is I want right. to go to Will's house. And I get the address. The other protocol that matters here is BGP, which is the Border Gateway Protocol. And if DNS is the address lookup, BGP is. GPS is okay. this is how you get there. Okay, so, so it's like maps, I say, for example. It's what? It's like Google Maps or, or Apple Maps or Yeah, it's yeah. something like that. So so if I say, you know, I want to know how to get you know my computer when I want to go to let's pick another website. When I want to go to UVA server, my homepage at UVA mm-hmm. or something like that, I do the DNS lookup and it says, okay, I put in you know, www.virginia.edu slash computer science slash Mark Sheriff. And it turns it into the numeric address, the IP right. address of where it needs to go. But then BGP is the thing that says, oh, I know how to get there. You do, you go from your house and you go down this, this, you know, Comcast line to here. And then you go from there to here. And you it's still the don't have actually, Ting? I'm sorry. You still don't have Ting? That is not giving me hope because my neighborhood hasn't even like voted yet. Okay, oh so re- so okay. Side note: We did get an email from Ting saying, "Hey, COVID sucks. Construction got delayed a little bit. We promise it's coming. We hope to have it to you in the winter. We're sorry." So 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 what you're saying is you're 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 still waiting for the eth- for the Ethernet winds of winter. <sighs> yes. Ting more like George R R Ting. Anyway, oh, all right. So, so BGP is important because if I'm not trying to go to UVA, which is in the same relative, well, it's probably one network right. jump over because it's on an academic thing. But regardless, if I'm trying to get something from Japan, mm-hmm. BGP is the thing that's going to tell it, oh, jump from here to here to right. here to there know how to get physical across the wires that you are transitioning and the servers. The servers in this case are if you if you've ever seen like 
Mad Men or any other period piece with the operators with all the wires and stuff. Effectively, that's what a server is doing. It, yep. So so here's what Cloudflare saw. OK, and they have they have graphs here and it's great. So they're looking at the BGP update. So BGP, uh, the protocol shares with everyone else on the network their current map. It's like, OK, you know, I live in Virginia, so it's like Virginia giving the rest of the United States. Here's the map of Virginia. If you need to get somewhere in Virginia, here's where Virginia is and here's where right. everything isn't. So it's no updates, no updates, no updates. And then at 11, 11 o'clock, 1040, whenever it was, there's this 250 X times spike of BGP updates coming from Facebook servers. And then it goes silent. Then the DNS lookup. So now the DNS tables at Cloudflare, which serves a lot of the DNS requests, it's an open, open DNS. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the number of requests for, hey, where's Facebook? Spike. So the BGP goes, goes spike and then quiet and DNS spikes and then goes continually up. And then the other, the other services like Twitter go up too, because people are trying to find out what happened to Facebook. Right. So effectively what happened is this, this is partially conjecture, partially what we've heard from rumor mill from other posts on, um, you know, uh, Reddit from, from engineers is basically this. Someone tried to push an update to the server infrastructure at Facebook. But when they pushed that update, it deleted Facebook from the map. Right. If Facebook is deleted from the map, they can't fix it remotely because it's not on the internet. Right. So they had like, to find it would be a, like my house just disappeared or even even my street disappeared. Exactly. And so they they had to go manually into fix it. You think, oh, that's not a big deal. The, the, the other problem was the way the security was set up at the data centers. They had to beep their badges at the door to get through, through these impressive steel doors. Those systems were on the same network that Facebook was on. Right. So they couldn't even get into the room. It's the equivalent of locking your keys in your car and your car happens to be on every continent on the planet. And you have to figure out how to get the right keys to the right car at the right, right. place. And so they were manually dispatching people trying to get into these data centers to try and push the, yeah. an update to get right. Facebook back on, uh, back on the internet itself. And, um, unfortunately they succeeded. Unfortunately, <laughs> again, this is, you know, it's important for some countries, but the, 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 the memes of, Oh, we had peace on our time for five hours. Yeah. I, I, I felt that, but it, it really is an interesting lesson as to just how delicate the internet actually is. Seems like a lot of societal structures we depend on are incredibly delicate. Maybe we should do an episode that's dedicated to addressing all the way things could go wrong. Maybe we should. Maybe that's something that happens in, in the month of October, yeah. with the, the spooky month, yeah. where we just try and convince people that the world is ending. Pretty much, yeah. But the Facebook, the Facebook thing was... It, one of the arguments I saw was it's terrifying that one person's error could do this, mm -hmm. but it's also terrifying that if it wasn't one person, the error went through multiple levels of right. approval before the error happened. And then, you know, services fail. And this is the type of catastrophic error that uh, you, you can't just, you can't just go in and, and, you know, insta insta fix. Oh. Um, it took a little bit more standing up to do, but it reminds me of those um, old, uh, those old ads where they were trying to like for all those, you know, uh, like pop up shop academies are like, Oh, we'll teach you how to make video games that were like really popular in the you know late nineties, early two thousands, even in the mid two thousands. And I remember there was always the ad of like, Oh, we need to tighten up the graphics on level three. Like that was their feedback. And it's just like, <laughs> no, it, it's, it's not that simple. That is not, what Q and A does? <laughs> no. Oh yeah, just tighten no. up the graphics on level three. Oh, thanks. We're we're glad we're paying you a salary. Anyway. <sighs> Computers are neat. Usually, sometimes. Most of the time. Most of the time. 
I think uh, we have hit our time limit. I've noticed we've been going longer in the past few episodes. Yeah, so we probably should. Bit. We probably should call it. Um, thank you so much for spending some time with us uh, today. We know that your time is the most precious resource that you have. You spend a little bit with us, and we just thank you sincerely for it. Thanks again to Matt B for sending in our first question. We very much appreciate it. If you have a question that you would like to send to us, like Matt, want to be cool like Matt, you can email us at hosts at regradequest.com and we verify that the email address does actually work because we got a message on yeah. the email. <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't that I misconfigured our email and it was off of the internet. We actually got a request through the, through it. Yeah. So that's that is wonderful. If you haven't had the opportunity to send us uh, a review on the podcast service of your choice. We'd very much appreciate that, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. You can always find the latest episodes at regraderquest.com, where there is also the button if you would ever like to record an audio question and see if we can actually figure out how to do that in the Anchor system. That's the next uh, major challenge for us. That's the next badge we need to earn in our podcasting sash, I suppose that and sell those last few boxes of cookies, but we'll work on that. Um, I think that'll do it for us for today. So take care, be safe and watch for Fallen Goats. Watch for Fallen Goats would not be a good password because it's an expression we have used many times. That is not a password for our email.